So I think that um, what we want to do first is we're going to, you'll see if I've, you've seen any of the, the how to draw sessions that I've done, you'll know that I like to start with a bunch of uh, circles, uh, banana shapes, nacho shapes, and so on. Uh, so the first thing we're going to actually do is start with a circle. And so if you have your page here, this is very much like sort of eight and a half by 11, but it's scaled up a little bit. So you'll want to go to your right side of your page and maybe about a quarter of the way in from the edge, make a small circle of this size. I'm going to make it a little bit darker after. I just want to make sure I outline it first. Okay, uh, probably not too visible. How is that looking? I'm going to make it a little bit darker. How's that? Can you, oh, how is that for visibility? Is that okay? I wonder if it's possible to even zoom in a little bit on that. I think that might be easier for them to see because I, I can't zoom with the, uh, the screen this time. <laughs> like, I, I got it really easy sometimes. Oh, because we'll have a few details. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Excellent. I like that. And if you can get it so that it, it zooms just enough so you can see the page size. Perfect. That's excellent. That would be great. So there we go. So you can see it's sort of on the right side of the page. It's a small circle like that. Um, you know, about a, a fifth of the, of the page. And the reason for that is because then I'll want to make a bigger circle after that because this represents kind of where the animal's head will be. Now, what I'd like you to do is imagine that there is, oh, this is like sort of like a, like a pizza or something, I guess, or a balloon. I don't like the idea of balloons, but <laughs> it's a circle. We're going to make a bigger one to its left and three times its size, all right? So you want to make one that's about three times that size. You can use your fingers kind of to measure off how big that is, and about one, two, three. So I'll mark in about there, and I'll make another circle. And it should be beside it, but a wee bit higher, just a tiny bit. So it connects to this circle here at, you know, if it was on a clock, it would be at like about uh, 9.30 or something. So I'll make a, a circle like this size. And you know, the idea is here, you don't want to draw these too heavily because you can then erase out more easily if you need to. Because sometimes you have to adjust the shapes as you go and that's okay. And if you're wondering why we're doing it in this way with uh, these, these circles and shapes and stuff first, uh, as an artist, you know, you'll, you'll ask artists and they'll, they'll often tell you that what we do when we try to draw something from life, for example, is we try to break it down in our minds into a, as many small, simple shapes as we can uh, because it's so much easier to comprehend uh, these, these simpler shapes and, and the mind can recognize these shapes more easily. So th that's kind of what we're doing here. So you get two circles now, right? So that doesn't look like much like a vaquita or almost any kind of animal except maybe an amoeba or other small or sort of plant cells or so on or animal cells, but you know, bear with me. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do actually is on that small circle, we're going to draw a line through it that cuts it in half, but the way it's going to cut it in half is not not along the line that, that joins the two, but just turned up a little bit on the left side, like this. But right through the middle of it, of that small circle. Okay. In math, this would be, in geometry, this would be a line that bisects it, and it cuts it in half. But you can see it's at a little bit more of a tilt this way, just a little bit. The reason for that is because this will help us to place the animal's uh, eye and its mouth. Remember I mentioned that the vaquita has this sort of Mona Lisa smile? It really is a very, very subtle smile as, as uh, porpoises go, or well, porpoises have a smile like that anyway, as cetaceans go. So the first thing we're going to do here uh, is we have now the position for the eye. I'm going to mark that with a little bit of a, a cross there. And then this line that we drew here is where, more or less where the mouth is going to be, but it's not going to be a straight line. But first what we're going to do before putting the mouth in is put the sort of the lines that define the head. So for that, you'll take uh, this, first of all, up here, you'll make a, a little line, a light line that is parallel to this line that you drew here. Uh, in other words, it's at the same angle. It's, it's the same distance between the lines at all points. That's what uh, this parallel line here. That line is going to kind of give us our porpoise's forehead and the area just behind uh, it, its head and uh, the blowhole and so on. Because okay? remember, remember how whales and dolphins breathe? They, they don't breathe through their mouth. 
they have, and they, they don't have nostrils on the front of their face like we do, uh, they have a hole on the top of their head, uh, at various you know, places depending on the species, called a blowhole. Uh, and that is what vaquita do as well. And we're going to put that in afterward. Uh, it'll actually, you know what, we can put it in right now. Just a little notch right in front of where that line that you just drew connects with the, the small circle. Just a little arch like that. And we'll, you'll see after how this fits together, it'll be easier to comprehend. The next line we want to do will help define its chin uh, and sort of the, the, the jaw line of, of the vaquita. Okay, so for that, you'll draw a line uh, that is along the bottom of this circle, but not parallel to these lines. It'll start, it'll basically join with this line right about, yeah, right about here actually. So it's going to be not a flat line, it's also a little bit tilted, but not by too much. So it looks like this, like that. Okay. So again, these are all just light lines because you don't want to make it too heavy. You know, it'll be easier to uh, erase the parts out afterward. Okay, so that kind of shows us where the head would be. Uh, now, what I'd like to do is actually draw in the outline of the head and the snout uh, and uh, the melon is what it's called. There's this sort of the bulgy area on the front of the top of their head. Uh, and so that's, that's the melon. What we're going to do is start at this point just in front of that blowhole we drew. And you'll go out a little bit and then turn downward so that you head toward the that line that, draw, that cuts uh, this circle in half. And you'll see here, what we want to pay attention to is that this line is, it's not straight. If I were to draw it on the side here, it's kind of, it curves down and then curves very, very slightly outward, um, but just slightly. So the important thing there is that there's this tiny, tiny bit of a beak that they have. So it's kind of like they have, a, the, their forehead comes down and just slightly turns out, but just very small amount. And then when you get to that point there, that's the tip of the snout. This line that we drew through that circle is, the, is where the tip of the snout would be. And then it comes down and then curves toward the place where we drew this lower line out of the circle. And that is the lower jaw. Okay, Sort of like that. Uh, then the, this line here continues up. This is basically represents the, the, the back of the animal. So where that starts, we're heading toward the dorsal fin. Okay, so, but right now we're just gonna, we're gonna finish up the head here, okay? So we have the lower jaw line, and that will continue through here. And now we can place the mouth and the eye in place. So we have the locations for that marked with a little cross in the middle of that uh, smaller circle. That's where the eye will be. Uh, and then the mouth, we're going to have uh, fun drawing that, and I'll show you uh, the particular shape that it has on the, on the front end of the snout over there. Okay? So first, let's, uh, let's put the eye in place, right? So it's always nice to start with an eye. I, I'm actually kind of funny that way. Whenever I drew, uh, like I draw a lot of dinosaurs, and my friends always kind of tease me because I would always draw the eye in last. And so some of them were, were it, it totally threw them off. Um, because the eye is such an important part, I wanted to make sure that I got the rest of it right. Now, for whales and dolphins and porpoises, their eyes um, have this very serene kind of a look. And so we're going to put the eye here at this sort of center part of the circle. And the way it's shaped is it's very much, the overall shape is, is kind of similar to a human eye that is sort of like sleepy looking. Okay? So it kind of, it arches and then there's a little bit of a, a lower lid, this upper lid and the lower lid kind of, and, and it looks kind of sleepy-ish. It's a bit longish. Like that. Now, the mouth is the, uh, the part that will really help uh, to get the expression of the uh, vaquita. Uh, and so here's what we're going to do. This line that we drew down here is what we're going to use. This, the mouth ends just below the tip of the snout here. Just tiny bit. Well, pretty much at the tip. And the way it works is, actually, it'll, it'll, there, there's a turn that happens. Okay, so start about maybe a third of the way in from the outside edge of the circle 
toward the eye. So about one third of the way here. And just below that line, basically go toward the snout parallel to that line. And then when you get to a point that's about one third of the way between the snout tip and the edge of the circle, turn it slightly upward. And then meet it just basically just cross that line just a little bit like this. So what we have happening here is the, the front end of their mouth, if you were to look at the head uh, from the front, you would see that the mouth kind of comes downward and then comes up toward the center and then back to here. So it's got this really cute little smile and its eye would be here if you're looking at it from the front again sort of thing. They have this really subtle little smile. Okay, so that's what we're seeing from the side here. This little upturned end here. This is very important part of the uh, vaquita to help us to define it. And you'll see the other parts that are very important are the, 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 shape, the, the shape of the coloration, the markings, um, because the vaquita is also known uh, sort of in a um, sort of a, a cutesy way as, as uh, the panda of the sea, right? So it's, uh, it's got the markings around the eyes that make it look like a panda. It has a little bit of a mask almost. And so that'll help to uh, show what it looks like as well. But what we're gonna do before we get to that part is now we've got most of the head and we've even put the blowhole in place, right? Uh, around the blowhole, one thing that you can do is you raise the, the back a little bit above the blowhole after it comes out from it. So there's a little bit of a notch there. So the blowhole is actually it kind of indents a little bit. Uh, and then there's also the hole uh, into the, toward the animal's lungs where the air goes. And then, you know, if they were surfacing, it would, it would, you know, breathe out uh, a bunch of exhaled gases and a little bit of whale snot as well, probably. Um, it would be fun. I know some researchers actually collect whale snot uh, from what they, they blow out from their blowholes and, and conduct research that way. It's just really amazing to be a biologist. Uh, just so many neat things that you can learn about animals in so many creative ways. I know when I was working in the field, uh, we had to come up with interesting ways to solve problems to try to figure out how to measure things. So what we're going to do now is uh, work on the body of the animal. So we have this big round circle here, and we're going to use that to help us figure out how to make the body in, in its shape. So go to the other end of the big circle, right over here, just a little bit... Uh, just slightly above the sort of the halfway, just slightly above the point that uh, that is at the far end of the far left end of this, and you use that and the two lines that we drew here for the back and the, th the throat of the animal, and connect those in sort of a, a large kind of a loop shape like this. It, it goes a little bit wider first, turns around at this point, and then comes back to meet this line here. Like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, remember, these are animals. They, they can flex their body a lot. So it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just getting the overall proportions. Something like that. Now, that's also not the full shape of the animal's um, uh, body, but that is a good part of it. Okay? Uh, so this here gives us most of the, the what's called the thorax of an animal, or sort of the upper part, where, where our uh, lungs are, basically, and where its lungs are as well. Uh, the next thing that we want to put in there is its flippers. So they've got these cute little flippers that come out of the front, and they are the equivalent of our arms. They're the same limbs uh, that uh, in, in terrestrial animals uh, coming out of the, 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 the ocean, um, they evolved into our arms, or into <laughs> earlier terrestrial animals' arms. In whales, uh, they evolved from arms, from terrestrial animals that walk on land, back into um, things that function the same way as, as fins do on fish. And so flippers are actually very, very, very modified arms. So here we go. So we're going to put that, and this is where the lines that we drew are also going to be useful. That big circle is going to be where, what's going to define uh, the, the shape of this flipper. Okay, so the front edge of the flipper. We're going to start here, and we're going to draw along this line down to about this point here. Okay? And there's a, a tip there. That's the tip of the flipper. And then from here, just a little bit, you know, about halfway between where this circle, two circles touch and the bottom, you start and you just draw a little dotted line for a wee bit. 
and then it comes out like this and down and there's a slight curve like this so it, it's a little bit concave is what it's called it's dented inward like that so that's the flipper on our side of the vaquita now we're looking at this vaquita mostly from the side but not completely it's turned slightly toward us with its nose just slightly it's partly why we can see a bit of a curvature in the mouth like this so the other flipper on the other side of the vaquita will show over here not quite in line with this one, but a little bit uh, visible in front of it because of the way the animals turn. And it's just going to be a small triangle like this. The reason why it's not the same shape as this one, not as sharp pointed, is because we're seeing it at a different angle. It's, we're looking at it a little bit more edge on. So just like if I were to take my hand uh, and we're seeing the flipper on our side like that, the flipper on the other side is like that. And you can see my hand is shaped differently as a result. So that's why this one is a little bit um, flatter, okay, like that. And uh, now we have the flippers. I'm just adjusting the, the shape of the jaw a little bit. You know, this is what we do as artists. We kind of draw in the proportions overall, and then we fix it along the way as we need to. And so you'll see that this is something that I do as well. The next thing that we're going to add uh, is um, the dorsal fin. So now whales and uh, dolphins and porpoises, or whales in general, or cetaceans in general, are wonderful uh, examples of, of how evolution can change the shape of an animal uh, from depending on the lifestyle that it leads that, um, repeatedly. So in other words, these animals evolved from land-dwelling um, four-legged animals. And we, you know, four-legged animals don't have fins on their back. They don't need them for swimming. Even, you know, like mammals that do swim a lot of the time, like polar bears, for example, they don't have it. But Whales have a very long evolutionary history and they've spent so much time in the water through their generations that they've uh, evolved to be very efficient swimmers. And part of, of being an efficient swimmer is good control uh, of your direction in the water. That's where fins come in. And so the vaquita uh, and other uh, whales, dolphins and porpoises have these uh, dorsal fins or fins on their back that uh, help them to move through water very uh, effectively. So what you're going to do is go to the ver very top of the back of the vaquita. And actually, I think I maybe made them a little bit too fat, but yeah, it's okay. It's close. Okay, to the top here, but right in the midway point of this line of the back of the animal as it passes through the circle. And then you're going to draw a, a kind of a, a hooked Fin. Now, here's the thing. Porpoises, specifically, uh, among cetaceans, uh, in other words, all the animals, uh, the seven species in the family Phocinidae, have an amazing diversity of shape of this dorsal fin. Some of them, uh, the finless porpoises, have no dorsal fin. Uh, other ones, like the harbor porpoise, have more sort of a triangular dorsal fin. Then you have the Dow's porpoise, which we also have on the west coast here uh, in BC, have this amazing, almost kind of a forward swept uh, uh, dorsal fin that looks more like, like, like this, basically. It's a strange looking little one. The vaquita is actually the porpoise that has a dorsal fin that looks the most, in my opinion, like that of a dolphin uh, in, in the family Delphinidae. So they have this wonderful hook-shaped dorsal fin and very tall for a porpoise as well. Uh, it's not, okay, I'm, I'm hoping I got this about right here. It's, it's pretty close. Um, but, and it's also kind of hooked like this, which is also something that's very much like that of, of, of more of dolphins. Okay? So that's, this is one, this is the, the most dorsal finny of the porpoises, I think you could say. <laughs> uh, so now we've got the three uh, fins of the vaquita the dorsal fin and the flippers, and now we want to put the rest of the, the tail area in place. So for that, this is going to be sort of the tail stalk. You're going to make, and this is where I make reference to different kinds of uh, shapes that we have. In this case, it's fruit. Uh, a banana is the closest that I can imagine that this looks like. So we're going to take the body here and continue it and narrow it down at the back, sort of in the shape of a banana. And you'll see it goes like this. Like that. Okay, so it's kind of, kind of a little bit hooked, but with a blunt end. 
It's kind of like looking at one half of a banana, basically. Like that. Okay. So again, you can see that this is mostly seen from the side, slightly turned its, uh, toward us. And then we have, so that's the tail stalk. Uh, these are, dolphins and, and, and whales in general are amazing in that they have lost a pair of limbs uh, through the process of evolution. They used to be land, or their ancestors were land dwelling and so they had four legs. But early whales also had four legs and over time those hind legs became less and less, uh, they were not used much compared to the uh, flippers and the tail. And the tail is the one that's used mostly for propulsion, for pushing it through the water. And so that's what we're going to draw next. And those legs that would have been about here are no longer present. But in, in many species, um, at least in early species, you still had those present in early whales. And in modern uh, whales, in some cases, you can find the remnants of some of the bones that were there still. Uh, anyway, so what we need to do is put in the the, the main engine, basically, of the vaquita, the main uh, sort of propulsion system, and that is it's, it's flukes. These special uh, horizontally held uh, tail fin is known as uh, a fluke. And so what we're going to do is it has two lobes, the left and right, and so one of them on our side will come down like this. Now, we're looking at this, as I said, mostly from the side, but this vaquita is in a, a power stroke where it's pushing its tail downward. And it's just about to exit that, so its tail is pointed downward. Its flukes are pointed downward. There's one half. The other half comes here, but note that it is not exactly symmetrical. It's a little different shape. Remember what I said about the left and right flippers? They're slightly different shape because of perspective, because of the angle at which we're seeing them. So here's what happens with the, the tail fin or fluke. Imagine you can sort of draw a dotted line between them, but we want to modify the edge of that. And it looks like this. It comes up a little bit. It's a little bit concave again. And then there's a notch right in the middle. And then it comes back out. And again, a little bit of a hook at the uh, tip of that other lobe of the fluke. So that's what it looks like here, basically. And we're seeing this slightly from below, right? That's the underside of the flukes. Now what happens here, and I'm just going to grab my eraser here real quick. What's going to happen here is you're going to erase out actually a little bit of the line, the banana shape we drew, because this part of the fluke is actually going to, the one on our side is going to intercept it a little bit like that. And so there's actually a, maybe a dotted line or shading here like that. Okay, so it's held uh, onto the tail stalk um, it's kind of like if you had a, two sheets of paper that were uh, right angles to each other and you inserted one into the other, that's kind of what happens. Sort of. It's thicker than that, but <laughs> that's the general idea. And actually, I'm just going to slightly fix up my jawline here. Just make it a little bit flatter. Okay, now we have most of the animal's shape in place. What we need to do is add its color pattern. Uh, and that is one of the things that will make a vaquita very recognizable as the vaquita among porpoises, because porpoises also have an amazing diversity of color patterns. Uh, not many colors overall, there's lots of grays and browns, blacks and whites, but uh, the way that those are organized uh, really, really helps you to identify porpoises one from the other. The vaquita, as I uh, mentioned before, was, is also known as the panda of the sea, and they were really adorable. The reason that name comes about is because there's a dark little circle shape around the eye. So you can draw kind of a, a little, little circle like that around the eye here. And then the other thing that happens is that uh, the mouth is surrounded by black. The whole snout is surrounded by black in a particular way. You know, there's a, a dark line sort of just above the mouth like this that heads toward the snout. And then just before it reaches the tip of the snout, because we're seeing it a little bit from the front, you'll see that there's this dark area that comes up and heads toward the blowhole, but not quite as far. So it's kind of a curved line that goes in and back out like that. That's the margin of the dark area, sort of a black snout. So if you were to shade it, it would be dark in this area here. Okay. 
And then underneath the mouth, on the lower jaw, you have a similar uh, line that defines a dark snout like this. Uh, and you'll go all the way up toward almost to the tip of the snout, but slightly below. And then it kind of bends back a little bit as well, but not as, not as much of it there as in the upper jaw. And you can fill in that area with black as well. And this circle around the eye, you can actually darken that whole area as well. That's kind of that little mask, kind of like panda bears have, hence the name, panda of the sea. It's got this little very well-defined circle of black around its eye. There's also another thing that happens here. On the, the lower jaw, that dark snout area, you have this neat little, little string that comes of, of black that comes away from it. And it, it starts here, and it goes a little bit downward back, and then it turns up sl smoothly in a curve, and then it connects with the flippers, just from above the flipper like that. And the, the, what starts out as a really thin line also gets thicker as it heads toward the flipper, like this. So this area you can kind of darken as well, like that, okay? And so there we go. And then there's actually also often another thin line that just stays thin that starts from back here. Okay. And what also happens, so this area here is lighter on the bottom, it's white underneath. We, we have a white paper anyway, so you can't really see that, but uh, I'll show you after with some of the shading. Uh, but these areas become black. Uh, the flippers are darker as well. And oh, just, this is very, very rough here just to give you an idea. And then there's a lighter area behind the flippers uh, that is very, very gradually melding into the gray of the body. Uh, but that overall kind of, if you made a dotted line, would be around here. Okay? So, and then there's also uh, on, on these individuals kind of a, a bit of a, uh, this light comes certain distance back and then kind of vanishes. So, it, it's a, a bit hazy in the back. Most of the color patterns are well defined on the face, like that. So what we can do now, actually, is we can add some, uh, some harder lines to it if you want. Uh, you can either do this with a marker or with a pencil, uh, and then we can also erase out the guidelines that we did. So I'm just going to make this outline with uh, a marker, just so that it's uh, easy to see that. And then the nice thing about this kind of an activity is if you follow these kinds of instructions, you can make your own coloring sheets. Basically, this, uh, a nicely defined, uh, especially with ink, outline of an animal can be used really well as a, a sort of a, a homemade do-it-yourself coloring sheet. And, and these are fun because then you can either you know, photocopy them or, make, or draw them new, uh, and then you just can color them in afterwards. So what I'm going to do is just basically follow along the lines that we did, because we've already set those up nicely. And uh, just along the, the edge of the vaquita, but not along those circles that we did before, because those ones we can then erase out. So I'm just going to draw it in with a marker here. You can do it either with pen or with a darker pencil. Uh, I suggest pen in this case because you can then erase over the whole thing and you won't erase the lines that you need. And there's the blowhole. And remember the, the front of the snout here has this very subtle curvature on it, like that. And there's the eye again. The eye is actually, you can just make it totally dark because they really have a beautifully dark eye. There's, here's the mouth again. Remember the mouth has this very, very subtle kind of curvature on it. So it just slightly goes down and then it slightly turns up, slightly. And there's this teeny bit of a curve at the tip. So uh, one of the things you'll notice that with baby vaquitas are absolutely adorable. So with, like with a lot of mammals, there's a bit of a change in the shape of the animal as it matures. Uh, usually when they're born, they're, they're stouter, they're shorter, little chunky little things uh, with a shorter snout. And um, they have these, these little lines, kind of um, indentations along their body, uh, which is something that you find in a lot of uh, young uh, whales and dolphins. And those ones eventually vanish as the animal grows. But they're, they're, they're really adorable. They're, they're small little chunky little 
uh, shorter snout, rounder snout than the adults. But the adults are also absolutely adorable in my opinion. They're only about, you know, they're less than a meter and a half long typically, right? So they're really tiny. They're the smallest cetacean alive today. So again, they, they represent a very unusual uh, animal that, you know, for me as a biologist, uh, diversity is, is, is just crucial uh, to, to preserve. It's it, it just, there's so much beauty in the world. Uh, the Kita is a great example of how uh, you have a very unique kind of a shape uh, in, in, in a whale. It's, it's something that you, you see one and then the other and you can start to tell the differences as you study them. And uh, as I was going through some of these, like the, the shape of the dorsal fin, um, the particular shape of the, the coloration patterns in the face, and all of these make this animal very unique. Its size, um, and of course, its role in the ecosystem. And many of these kinds of things, we still don't even know a lot because research is, is still opening up so much about their world. Uh, and that's what makes it, for me, especially painful to lose animals uh, an entire species before we even get a chance to learn much about them because a lot of what I do is reconstruction of, of prehistoric animals and from working from fossils, photographs of fossils and the actual fossils, we try to reconstruct what this animal may have looked like when it was alive. And it's a lot of work to try to piece together an animal's life and its appearance from fragmentary remains. Even when we have an animal with which we lived, and a good example is the dodo bird, there's so much we don't know anymore about what it looked like or behaved when it was alive. And so it's tragic when we lose animals, so we have to do our best to preserve them. And this is why I think it's absolutely crucial that we work as hard as we can to try to preserve the vaquita, uh, not only because it is such an amazing little animal, uh, and key to the ecosystem in which it lives, but also as a way to say, no, we, we, we don't give up, no matter how it looks. We don't give up, we will continue to fight. Uh, and this is, we take a stand against the exploitation of them uh, and we are not going to make anything easy to give up. So here we go. This is most of the shape of the vaquita that we drew. And now what we can do is actually erase out some of those guidelines that we did. So this is where it's easy to just kind of take an eraser and just go right over these circles that we made. Uh, and what that allows us to do is just to see the final shape. And what I can also then show you is, is a few little fun ways to make this look even more realistic now that we are working in uh, this real life, corporeal, non-digital sort of a form, I can work with an actual pencil here and show you how I use shading to give it a little bit of depth. Okay, so these animals are not flat, like on this page, they're three-dimensional, right? They, they take up space like you and me. And so as an artist, we have to think about how we're going to uh, convey that idea that, that the animal is not just a two-dimensional flat uh, shape pasted onto a page, but try to imagine it as, as, as standing out from the page. And to do that, we use uh, how light interacts with shapes. And there's a very few sort of important uh, uh, aspects of that. And it's really simple with an animal like a whale or dolphin or porpoise because they have such smooth, relatively simple shapes compared to some animals like, say, a giraffe with skinny legs and little horns and all that kind of a thing. So it makes it easier for us. So what we're gonna do is imagine that the light is coming down from above, say, let's say from this direction, shining on the vaquita like that, okay? So, and, and remember that we also had those, those dark areas on the face. So what I'm gonna do is, because I erased out some of these lines, I'm gonna make those darker with the pencil now so that we can see that more clearly. And now I don't have to worry about um, messing up other lines, I can make these darker. There's that, that wonderful little eye patch around the eye. that gives it its panda name and then the, the little dark snout. And I'm using a pencil here that is actually um, all graphite. There's no wood in it, so I have a large surface that I can use for shading. Uh, you can get these at art stores. Uh, many people like to use them because, you know, there's no 
there's no wood in them for one thing, uh, and there's no. It's harder to break the uh, the, the the graphite. Although I just before the show I demonstrated very effectively how I could break this one in half by accident. But <laughs> so it does happen. That's okay. Uh, the nice thing is that it's uh, it's just just graphite, so you can get a large surface like this. So there's that area. This is all a beautiful little black snout they have. They're very recognizable species compared to other porpoises even. And these color patterns really make it easier. Okay, and then it, remember there was that, that line that comes from back here and then curves toward the flippers like that. Okay, now these are the main uh, markings. Now we're going to add some shading. So remember I mentioned this area on the throat was white, so we're not going to add as much shading there. But overall what we do is we darken the bottom half a little bit and then gradually reduce the amount of shading toward the top where the light hits it. And actually what I can do here, and what you can do if you're using a pencil, is you can also use either a, a, a napkin or a, a little piece of paper or your finger to smudge some of that uh, graphite. Because especially if you use a relatively soft pencil, that smudging can actually help to make it, uh, you know, give you a, a very fine shading. So I'm going to add a little bit of shading to the bottom here. But it's, it's typically it's supposed to be white, so not a lot of it, right? And then it gets a little darker above it because here the animal is already kind of gray colored. Like that. And then the, the flipper is a dark color. And then underneath it, this flipper on the other side here becomes darker because it is under the animal and so the light doesn't hit it as directly. Back here too, on the underside of the body, it's going to be darker on the bottom a little bit. Uh, but remember that like uh, many animals, the vaquita is neat in that I mentioned that it's lighter on the bottom in its actual built-in colors. And there's a reason that animals evolved to look this way. It's, it's a pattern called counter shading, which means that the animal's underside, which it normally faces in a downward position, uh, is lighter in color. And the, the, the benefit of that is that when light hits it from above, it ends up sort of canceling out part of its own shadow on its body. And that makes it harder to distinguish from the background. It blends into the background a bit better, which is useful because then uh, predators that might be hunting it have a harder time seeing it from a distance. Or if it is a predator, then the animals that it is hunting have a harder time picking it out from the background and it can sneak up on them more easily. So this, this counter shading feature is something that you see in many, many animals alive today. And in fact, as, a, uh, as somebody who works on uh, reconstructing prehistoric animals, I often uh, use this... Um, this pattern on, on some of the animals that I reconstruct because we don't know the colors of some of them. Although we do know the colors of some prehistoric animals from, from the, the remains of their markings uh, that are preserved in, in certain ways that scientists have uh, been able to amazingly piece together. And we do in fact see counter shading in some of these where we have information about the color or tone of the animals. So it is something that we know has been in animals for many, many millions of years. And we see it in the vaquita today as well. So it's, it's a neat little pattern. So I'm just adding a little bit of shading uh, in the body here. Now I'm going to use my finger to kind of smear it a little bit to smooth this pencil out. I'm using a soft pencil here. And the softer the pencil, the darker the lines it typically makes. Or it doesn't take as much pressure to make darker lines. But the other nice thing about soft pencils is that they smear easily. And so you can use your finger or, like I said, some paper or tissue to help smoothen the, the um, lines that you make or this, this shading that you make. Because the shading itself can look sort of like liney or looks a little bit uh, striated or looks like it has stripes. And maybe you don't want that. That's where if it's uh, a soft pencil, you can just kind of uh, smear it across the, um, the lines in the opposite direction. And it really smooths it out nicely. So this is one of the techniques that um, artists use. And in fact, we, we use uh, more a tool called a shading stump, which is really just kind of a, a very tightly coiled piece of uh, paper that ends up being kind of a stick of paper. And then that can be used to smear the pencil even more effectively. And I don't have one on me right now, but uh, that's something that would be really, really effective to use. 
But in this case, it works really well just for your finger as well. And sometimes if you're just out in the field and are just sketching from life, you know, you don't always have all of your tools with you, but if you use a, a nice soft pencil, you can use your finger to smear it and, and shade with it. Now here with the dorsal fin, it's uh, facing sideways, it, it's, it's pointed straight up. So its sides are uh, vertical. So it's actually gonna be a little bit darker shade than the very top end of the animal because the light hits it on top. This is gonna be the brightest point up here. And the dorsal fin is gonna be about the same shade as the side of the animal, which I haven't fully shaded there yet, but you know, it's, it's roughly the same shade and this is gonna be a little bit rougher there. But that's okay because we can do a couple of things. One, uh, we can smear as I mentioned. The other thing we can do is also just use the eraser to smooth it a bit. And so I kind of erase out some of it that leaves some of the pencil on and I can smear the rest of it with my fingers then. And that gives us sort of an in-between kind of a tone. So these are all fun little techniques you can use to uh, make it a nice sort of a smooth, smooth shading for your drawing. And now it's starting to look more like a vaquita. You can you know, darken the parts here as well a little bit. And you know, I know most of us are not going to have the chance right now to be able to draw one from life. Uh, because it's, it's, you know, they live only in one place and there are very few of them left, so it may be hard to see them. But I'm really, really hoping that they can be protected and that they can start to reproduce again and start to increase in numbers. It's never too late to give up hope. Or it's, 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 it's never too late to, to hold on to hope as long as there is even the chance of them reproducing. Because you look at uh, some animals that have recovered from extraordinarily low numbers. Uh, condors, for example, now are in the hundreds. So if we can encourage uh, world leaders who are involved in this to increase the protections on them, I mean, there's definitely still hope in my opinion. And uh, this is why we have International Save the Vaquita Day. We want to help spread the word about this wonderful little animal uh, and let more people know, because I'll tell you, uh, even from last year, when I was doing a painting of, of the vaquita, I remember how few people actually even knew about the vaquita at all who walked in and, and watched uh, the painting happen or talked to the team members about it. So really, you should get, take up the opportunity to uh, spread the word to your friends uh, and, and, and let others know about both the existence of the animal at, at all and the fact that it is so critically endangered and that it really needs urgent help, which can be given to it, but we need lots of people to uh, participate and to spread the word about it uh, and to do what we can to help uh, establish the right kinds of protections for it. So there we go. Um, and remember I mentioned it's a little bit lighter on the bottom, so you can afterwards, you can even lighten parts out of it a little bit with an eraser part of the way. So we give it this counter shading, which uh, actually, as you can see, it kind of eliminates the shadow and, and kind of uh, cancels out some of the shading we did. And that's kind of the whole reason why counter shading evolved, is that it makes an animal more easy to survive uh, because it, it, it eliminates some of its shadow. So that's our vaquita basically now. Uh, and, and in life, so this would be a little bit smaller than your average baby, I guess, but in life, the vaquita, uh, an adult, would only be about three or four times the size, probably. So it's a really, really tiny porpoise. Well, okay, so it would be about, I guess it would be about that big <laughs> in life, right? <laughs> so uh, that's actually not that far from life size. Uh, and there we go. And then you can, you can sign yours afterwards as well. Uh, you can, like I said, you can use it for a coloring sheet. Uh, you can make more of them if you like. Um, and, and, and I found as an artist that artwork is an amazing way to spread uh, knowledge about animals that require conservation. So I do a lot of coloring sheets like this for kids. And so you'll see, uh, I'm gonna make available the, the coloring sheets I did as well. There's one for the vaquita. Uh, and um, you know, we can hopefully help more people to learn about it in a fun way. And this is, to me, kind of a fun way to do this. So uh, thank you very much for joining in and, uh, and uh, following along with uh, our vaquita drawing.